Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so we're doing the Warhammer preview. Uh, so this happened last night. Uh, I was working slash it's just it's so funny with these things because it just never works out me trying to do them at night. Uh, and I also just found out that dark, you could play Dark Tide yesterday, which I had no idea about, and I'm super pissed. <laughs> but you go on with it. I don't know. It's very disappointing. I would have planned my time differently if I'd known that these things were happening. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go through. Let's look at this preview. I logged on to Instagram for a hot second, and I saw one corn thing, and I was like, oh, yeah, the preview, because I woke up and I'd forgotten. So we're I saw something to do with new corn stuff, and it looked really cool. So that's the only thing that I've seen. Uh, so let's go through. Let's watch some of these videos. I'm going to scroll down slow. Oh, world leaders. It was something like that. I'm assuming a squad member. Okay, so take skulls and spill blood. Let's watch this. In the blood-slicked holes of our legion stand cages of hellish brass. Within these infernal chambers, esoteric rituals and torturous augmentations bind an octet of demons to a raging berserker. Finally, the screaming stops and the candidate emerges. It is magnificent. These are some of the best 40k models they've ever made. Holy crap. They did do the juggernauts. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> that's so good. Okay, let's go through this. Holy crap. So the eight bound, um, wow, they're possessed by eight demons. That's really cool. So it's been interesting with some of those berserker models where the straight berserkers, like there's some real hit hits and misses for me in them, and it's all just small tweak stuff. Overall, I do really like them, but these are great. It's funny with the possessed where these the possessed the Gal Vorback from Forge World, I absolutely love, and I do not care for the undivided ones that they brought out. They're just kind of like, I guess. But these, man, like, look at the overextended weapons you've got. Like, the wires are going through the muscle. Like, oh, my gosh. The helmets are perfect. It makes you want to start corn. These models are that good. <clears throat> of, of just... Like the the little details to the 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 legion shoulder pad that they've left on that they've now made massive and again the world leaders you always see with the marines it, it's just they abandon the armor right like Karn does his one arm so seeing their their skin and seeing the scaling of them inside the armor is just perfect right where it makes sense the connections you see how big the heads are in reference to everything else like the chains the skulls I love the like the teeth coming through it oh my gosh the corn symbols. The one shoulder pad left on each one is great. <clears throat> it's just the attention to detail on these. They've got the 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 nails that are long too. Mm. Great, great models. It's exciting. This is very exciting. <clears throat> um, so these are the exalted eight pound, even more dangerous and demonic than their other kind. So I guess these are extra possessed. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes pure eight pound world leader can. Even emerge triumphant, becoming one with the Neverborn, sharing its physical form. So I guess these are possible leaders, or is this a, a separate squad that you take that are just that much stronger? Again, a lot of the shoulder pads, a lot of everything else is very well done. Wow, that the the spinning blade inside of the hand, because <clears throat> this is a callback to, I think. Uh, they may have done it before, but the first time I remember is uh, with the Possessed for the Kill Team box set where it's got the, the mouth in its hand. Uh, I think they may have done it in the old Chaos Possessed, but I'd have to look up the bit. But I like the evolution of it being like, no, it's a mouth and it's got a blade in it. <clears throat> it's very well done. Like the two-handed chain glaive. Well, I guess all chain glaives are two-handed. The corn-looking chain glaive. Wow. Just great. 
So next we've got the Jakals. The World Eaters army isn't just about elite combat. The Butcher of Stardust, the Mortal Followers. See, I, I, I hope that they do this for all of them. They need to bring out the Thousand Sun Mortal Followers for Nurgle. They'd just be like a cult of shambling, like humans kind of thing. You could even kind of make them maybe casters, but moving into stuff like this is just great. Again, the weapons... They're described in, in the book so much, Traitor Guard, and especially Guard that are aligned with different gods. This is exactly what they look like, or what they sound like they look in the books. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> love the helmets with the, the skulls. Uh, wow. <clears throat> you got the big brute. Just like the books. I, like, again, I, a lot of the times what they're writing in the 40K novels is way cooler than the models that they actually have and now they're kind of going on par with that i like i like these a lot it's to, it, that it makes you want to do world leaders wow unreal it's just again the attention to detail um the packs with like blood in them the, the insane close combat weapons that they've got like the, the, these just inspire me because they're just so cool right and even the the heads man oh my god they just did they did these really well wow so you got the Lord on Juggernaut. Um, anything lucky enough to survive. So this is what I've al I've always wanted a squad of these. Always. At a games workshop, like I like in uh in the GTA, it's not the one that's in Toronto, it's the one I think that's in Mississauga, has an Iron Warriors converted army, and they converted a squad of corn juggernauts. And I saw those, I think, when I was 15, and I've always wanted a squad since then. <clears throat> These I might get right away, admittedly, because it's just, it's what I've wanted for so long. Like, oh man. Because if you've got the Lord, is there is there a squad too coming? They've got to do a squad. If they did the special character and they've got a Lord, you've got to have the squad. So they've got the corn version of the new Demon Prince, which is great. There's that character I was talking about there. There's Angron. Fantastic models. I hope they still do the Terminators. They really need to bring out the Red Butchers. That would really be the cherry on top of everything. Having, like, again, the Death Guard and Thousand Sons have their own Terminators. So I think that the only things missing, that's, see that, I want, there was my Karn model that looks like that. That's a better model than the Karn model. It's, it's so funny. I like Angor. I like all the models except Karn. I don't, I, <laughs> oh man. So <clears throat> I think the only things missing here are the Red Butchers, the uh, like a heavy weapons, heavy bolter squad of Marines, and then the full squad of the Juggernauts. Because we got a Lord on Juggernaut, you got the special character, but they've you've got to give me that squad. I want that squad, right? Oh, so cool. Oh, I'm so happy. It's funny missing the preview and, and, and working and being like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh my God, that's awesome. Okay, so corn thumbs up for me. I love all these things. I just hope they release those couple extra little bits, but that might be a, another release, right? Usually when they're redoing these armies, it's not everything at once. It's I'd say kind of they were doing it the right way where it's a classic Berserkers redone and then a bunch of new stuff. Um, and then there's still more stuff to come later. Like you need those, uh, the specialty apothecaries that I talked about in that previous video for corn, they can do as well. But that's amazing. Love it. So we got Beasts of Chaos. Let's watch this. Oh, man. It's a year of chaos, straight up. Unreal model. <laughs> the goat noises. Um, great new model. Uh, Beastmen have been waiting for stuff for so long, it's nuts. Uh, but this model is painted perfectly. I that That's a, an absolutely, unbelievably well done paint job on that, on that goat. <clears throat> 
the blending, everything, the horns are perfect. Wow. Like, truly astonishingly well done. So we got the cover. You've got the new special character. We'll have to see what else comes. Um, I hope there's more stuff than... I'm assuming there's more stuff than that. Hulking Raiders. I have to remain ripping his way through some unfortunate storm cast. Yeah, we'll have to see what else they bring out because I know it needs a full range refresh. Because it, it, it's tough because a lot of the models kind of look okay where of all the things to redo in AOS, like some like the Beastmen, like if you throw in some new characters and maybe a couple new larger creatures and beasts and stuff, you could really get away with it. But we'll have to see what happens. Again, wow, an unreal paint job on that model. <clears throat> we'll have to see what else comes. It's it's tough when they show the one-off model with the book because that might be it, right? And I hope that's not the case. Uh, it's just rules. New piece of case, Battle Tome next year. Oh, yeah, next year, okay. I, I wasn't sure if this was going to come out uh, for Christmas or not, but it's just a little sneaky preview, so that's fine. Hopefully, there'll be some more stuff coming. It, it, like, again, with the background, sometimes you can tell what else may be coming in these covers, but it's just kind of like ungores, beast gores, ungore. I already said ungores, but it's just those standard beast men, but like models, they can always update those. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm fearful that that's it because they've been doing that more and more, right, with uh, AOS stuff and even 40K of doing there's a new codex and you just get one character, so we'll have to wait and see. Okay, let's check out what else there is. Beast of Chaos. We've got Gloom Spike Gits for AOS as well. <laughs> Uh, unreal sculpted faces right off the bat. The wolves are perfect. Wow. <clears throat> Love it. I always thought the, of the old models, the uh, goblins riding wolves, like when they redid for uh, Warhammer Underworlds a warband. Uh, some of the coolest stuff for the goblins is this, right? It's a completely different take on them versus the the night goblins. These being the kind of more traditional goblins, but I guess they're still falling under the gloom spike gets. But like you could roll out like the chariots. There's so many things you can do with them with the wolves and kind of this like the Genghis Khan looking uh, goblins, kind of as a different facet. Uh, a different group under the gloom spites but again unreal sculpts I, I the faces of them are so different i feel to what they've been doing with the goblins so far and the wolf faces it's scary good like that's i think the best some of the best wolf faces i've ever seen i think before this it would have been the uh what's the character for the the Soul Blight Grave Lords, uh, the uh, who's in charge of the wolves. She's got two wolves on her base because those wolves, I would have argued, were the best sculpt faces. And now I think these take it. It's just wow, like the detailing and just like the face. It looks like a wolf face actually, which is crazy. I love the banner, the weaponry, the, with the kind of little difference uh, in style to everything else. And again, it like it's a Genghis Khan look. I love it. They've strapped all the wolves up. Right, great. <clears throat> Hopefully, we'll see some more of these. I, I, I'm trying to think what other they could do. The character chariots. I'm trying to think what else they had. I know they had a, so many special characters for these models. I believe that there was a full squad in Old World, so maybe they'll bring back that named character. That would be cool too. I love it. I think that's the same cover though. That's sad. You need, you need new covers every time. You got to switch it up. <clears throat> but still, new battle tome. So here's the outline. So Slaves is next. And then, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, Spring's going to be nuts. Holy crap. I like the idea of them pumping out the battle tomes and being like, 
all of them. Like everyone gets new battle tomes faster, right? It's it's way better to do it this way because the skew, especially with 40k there, where they did the Death Guard and uh, the Primaris right away, and then some people waited so long for their updated codexes. It's it's tough, and I know that that is difficult to do the balancing and everything else. But sometimes people wait a long time and get crushed for a while. Okay, uh, next up we've got Warhammer Underworld's Gnarlwood. The, that, that looked like a really a lot of orcs here too. Chaos and orcs here. That's cool. Is that a mushroom blow dart gun? Oh my god. It's funny with the Night Goblins, they need to redo those old squads and make them look like this. Again, insanely well painted. Underworld knocks it out of the park every time. So well done. So much character. Such a the the, the blowdart mushroom kills me. Unreal. Okay, so we've got the 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 great loon king here. Wow. Just every single small detail, the sewing together of the hat, like the mask, the shrooms on him, the weapon looks great. I don't think I have anything bad to say about these models. This, it's funny with the uh, having like the knights, right? Where he supplemented his uh, lance for a hammer. That's cool. That's very goblin, right? And this with their shooting squigs and one of them's hiding behind the shield that they've clearly, clearly stolen. And this, oh, squig on a stick. Let's go. The mushroom blow dart. So funny. See, that's another thing they could redo the uh, the goblin models from the old world that they're still using in AOS. It's just like you get, I don't know, you get like 20 goblins or some huge amount of goblins. Uh, and it's all like the same model basically, right? And they have no real character to them. But squads of these, if you, this is what they should do at some point for them. Is redo them with this kind of armor. You could have the stick squigs, shields. You can arm them with a couple different weapon options, right? These have so much character and look so much better. And the idea of the knights, right? Where they're these are foot knights, right? Squires, if you would. Uh, I love that. Oh, man, it, it, like even this, right? Like the shield, you got again a, a repurposed lance that's become a spear because they're just picking up what's broken on the field. And this again, probably pieces of someone that was riding a squig who died, who just picked it up and, and is rolling with those. Great. Another uh, Underworlds has not made a bad warband in a long time. And this is a great warband. Like that picture says it all. It's just great models. Oh, I want to play more, more Underworlds. Underworlds is doing it, uh, doing it right. Okay, Necromunda, Cawdor, Ridgewalkers. Let's take a look at this. What are these? Necromunda putting out fire. Uh, the Ridge Walkers, I have no idea what the heck is going on. So I guess they're just literally duct taping and welding together scrap to make these runners so that they have something to go onto the ash waste with because they have nothing because they're Cawdor. Wow. Like the grenade spear, like again, great models. I'm I, I'm blown away by this release. I think this is the, the best release I've seen, I don't even know, the last one. Like, since probably Death Guard in, the, in the, the starter box, right? Where it was like, oh my god, they're changing the game completely, right? Like, just, 
Like, it looks like these things are going to fall apart at any second, and I love that. Like, and I'm already thinking conversions ideas for these. Like, these would look great in some Nurgle, I think. You could do, even for corn, have corn followers change the heads out and have this be that they just scrap together some stuff just to go kill people. Like, oh, you could do a lot of conversions with these. Uh, this also very much looks like, what's uh, the privateer press game? Uh, War Machine. These kind of look like War Machine mechs, to be honest. Like when you first see that outline, uh, but still cool. And I like the head design on all of them. This is another thumbs up for me. This is nuts. Oh man. I, I guess there might be different loadout options. So you can do guns, maces, the lances probably have like this explodes. I assume. Wow. Great. Great models. Okay. What's next? So we got arcs of Omen. So this is the next storyline book narrative. What was that model? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is that? Okay, we need to go back. So... Is this the model from the Chosen unit just built with different options? I think this is a new model. Right? I believe this is a new model, and I think this gun is a new gun as well. So there may be another unit of Chosen or something coming out, but I'm pretty sure this is these are new. And then what is this thing at the end? So that, wow. Look at the head on that. What is that? So three books. This is, all looks like Chaos. I'm assuming this is a Chaos character as well. This is a crazy, this is going to be a nuts storyline. <clears throat> The three books is better. So uh, they were doing um, uh, the last, uh, the Psychic Awakening books where they did like 12 books, 14 books. It's too, it's too many books. You can't expect people to buy that many books to keep track of this, sh this season, right? This short storyline where they're like 40 bucks. Like it was wild to keep track. Um, and they shortened it for the Bellacore, uh, Marathi, Teclis when Kragnos came out. What was that one? got the books right here for broken realms right for broken realms they shortened it to four and four is doable okay but the three but i'm assuming this will still be the price of what the four was but three books is manageable i think like it's, it's tough because if this was literally anything other than chaos i'd be like well i'll just find out about it later but like i kind of want to get these books because it's all chaos and then there's a there's a fourth book. Oh, there is a fourth book. This will go through the winter and the spring. This there's no way it'll be Fulgrim. If it was Fulgrim, this would be the craziest thing ever. I'm always trying just to look to see if there's a couple of new things. Okay. Oh, it's Vashur. Oh my God, is that a, is <laughs> what is this? What is this? Is that a Dark Mechanicum Demon Prince? No, no. Demons and demonic entities in the warp are formed from coalesced emotions and drives of mortal creatures. Uh, we understand the greater gods of chaos to be formed from some of those primal mortal emotions, and Vashtor has been formed from the desire to create and manipulate and invent, to make things that didn't already exist. Vashtor wants to become a god. Vashtor is already considered a demigod, an independent demon within the realm of chaos. He is the arms dealer, the weapons broker of the great game that takes place between the chaos gods. So he's independent, he is too vital and valuable to any of them to risk attacking, but he wants more. 
So in the Vashtor miniature, we see an expression of chaos that we don't really see in the demons of the greater chaos gods. He is a demon of the forge of souls, a demon of machinery, of invention, and everything that we've associated with the obliterators, demon oh. engines, that flesh metal fusion of the technological and the organic you can see in Vashtor. When he assumes a physical form like demons do to enter the material universe, Vashtor makes a form from machine parts and sacrificial meat, and that is what you see represented in the Vashtor miniature. We see Vashtors armed with a hammer, which is the hammer of the Forge of Souls. And a hammer's a tool that can make things, it can destroy things. But that's different to what we've seen on demon princes. Vashtor's not a demon prince. He's not been elevated from the ranks of mortals uh, to become a champion of one of the Chaos Gods. He is his own creation. And the fact that he's got that unique armament, I think, speaks to something of his character. Vashtor is a demon of the forge. He's born aloft on a cloud of pollutant smoke and steam. He emanates foundry heat uh, and crackling electric discharge. The wings are not really for show, but they're not carrying him aloft in the manner of a bird. Uh, they're probably fine tools for precise mechanical engineering as much as they are actually wings. They're a symbol of his status and a sign of his ambition to become something greater than he might already be. So Vashtor has formed an alliance with Abaddon. Abaddon has huge temporal power, mortal power in the material universe. Vashtor has significant power within the realm of chaos, and together they can forge something that will allow Vashtor wow. to pursue his goals of becoming wow. a god, and allow Abaddon to pursue his ambitions of securing his dominion of the Imperium Nihilus. I did not. I thought that was a Dark Mechanicum thing. That's such a cool storyline. See, this is amazing. This is 40k in a nutshell. Un unbelievable. This is the coolest thing they've done in so long. Something completely new, completely different, right? Oh my gosh. Like, because you can see callbacks to different, like, chaos models, right? Like, different parts of different demon engines that obviously have been used in the summoning. Like, the explanation of it and just is just, right? Like, let's get Electro... 40k zombies right like tech thrall zombies that vashtor controls right you could do a whole bunch of new models and lead this into dark mechanicum where there's like the alliance between them like oh my gosh what an end it's funny again not seeing it live and doing the freakouts with uh with chat and everything it's just you know it, it was unfortunate i couldn't be here for it but i'm glad i did this video <laughs> i'm so hyped up again on warhammer oh my god i'm such a nerd okay anyways uh let me know in the comments what you're most excited about i think the aos stuff is truly exciting something to get exciting about and i know that it's unfortunate that a lot of the times it falls underneath 40k and i feel like some people who love 40k really push down aos being like ah forget that game 40k is where it's at but in again, in terms of gameplay, I argue the other way. But in terms of models, yeah, 40K is killing it these days. Oh, uh, man. I don't know. It's going to be tough. Uh, we'll have to see the release schedule for some of this stuff. But I, I kind of want those juggernauts. I've always wanted those juggernauts. So it's tough to tough to say no to something that I've always wanted. Oh, man. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. There will be lots of videos coming out, uh, more theory stuff. I'll be talking more about these as well. We'll probably do a further breakdown of, of everything. But this was kind of more reaction. But uh and I'm excited. I'm excited for Christmas. It's going to be crazy. Lots of new stuff. Again, please share, subscribe. Uh, I'll see everybody in the next video. Thanks for watching.